Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Father. Let's just unite our hearts in one mind, in one accord. Hallelujah. Asking the Father to just platform with us one more time. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Lord, we come to be still right now, Lord. For you to, Father, show yourself as God one more time, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We just say thank you, Lord, for what you have done, for how you have kept us, Lord. How you, Father God, how your mercy endures, God, forever and ever, Lord God. How goodness and mercy has followed us one more day that we can dwell in your presence, Father. We thank you that you were, Father God, an enemy to those things, Father God, an adversary to those things that try to rise up against us, Father. I thank you, Father, for keeping our minds, Father God, in a place of sanity, Lord. How we had, Father God, not just life, but abundant life to live to the fullest of this day, Lord. Yes, Lord, and even now, God, wherever we have defiled this temple, Lord God, in our thoughts, words, deeds, actions, Father, we come with a heart of repentance, Lord. Yes, that you can, Father God, release heaven, Lord God, and you can release your will tonight in, in word and worship, Lord Father God, that our minds can have the same thought as you, Lord Father God, of thoughts of righteousness, thoughts of holiness, thoughts of obedience. Yes, God, that we can be strengthened, that you can outpour upon us tonight, God, one more time, God, for we are in the season, Father God, of, of strengthening, and the world is in the season of shaking, Father God, and some of us even may be going through shaking, Lord, but we come tonight, Lord Father God, to find renewed strength, God. We come tonight to find life, God. We come tonight, God, to find deliverance and healing and empowerment, God, of your Holy Spirit and fire. For you are pouring out, God, your spirit upon all flesh. And we come tonight, God, to receive another pour out, Father. Continually, Father God, be, that you would pour out upon us, oh God. That you would pour out upon us, oh God. That you would pour out, Father God. And now prayers that they would not just be words, but we would come, Father God, with, 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 with a heart, Father God, to, to desire, Father God, something new. Yes, God, something new in you, Father. Take us to a new place. Take us to a new level. Yes, God, and as you pour out, Father, just give us that spirit, even in these days, as there's so much uh, energy and anxieties and fears and neuroses in these spirits. Yes, God, just all around, Lord God, that we can find that place to be still, Father, as your word tells us to be still and to know that you are God, Father. Yes, God, that we can even actually see in this time how you are moving, what you are saying, what you are doing, what you are doing even in our life, God, to show yourself as we have never seen you before. Yes, God. And even now, God, as we could just take 30 seconds or a minute. Yes, God, just as we come in, in, in unity, God, that you can pour, Father, upon us that bomb, that oil, Father God, that precious, Father God, bomb to heal us, oh, Father God, where the blessing, Father God, is decreed and declared that you would, Father God, bless us as a group tonight. Even, Father God, the worship, Father, through Sister Opal. Yes, Lord God, and, and our brother, Father Raul that you would just minister, Father God, to his spirit right now, God, as you open up the word, Father God, that you would just bring revelation, Father God, for you are, Lord, Father God, infinite. There is no comprehending your ways, Father. So release tonight, yes, God, release tonight, Father, whatever wisdom, whatever understand, whatever knowledge, God, is due to us, Father God, tonight, to know of you, Father, for this time and season. Yes, Lord, even now, God, pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your spirit. Father, move amongst the people tonight, God. Even now, Father, move, God. Let your spirit, Father, God, just move. Let your Holy Spirit of fire just touch us tonight, God. Touch us, Lord, even now, God. Yes, God, touch our hearts, Father, God, just to be at rest. Just to be quiet, Lord. Help us to know what shalom is, God. Help us to know what Je Jehovah Shama is, Father. That presence, that presence that was with Moses on the mountain, God. Let that presence come even now. Even now, Lord, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Father, I just ask that you would just, Father, release courage, that you would release boldness, that you would release strength, Lord God. Yes, God, that we would hunger and thirst, God, for righteousness, that we may be filled, oh God, that we may be filled, Lord God. Help us, Father God, to to just yes god find the transition of how we hunger for things in this world oh god that we would hunger father for you lord god hallelujah and the things of you lord yes. hallelujah thank you lord 
praise you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, for you are good. You are good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you see the needs upon this line tonight, Lord. Those that need healing, those that need encouragement, those that are distracted right now, those that may have had some kind of news come in the last couple of days, God, that just that just rocked them, Lord God. That even now, just, it's hard for them even to get up or even to understand, even maybe questioning themselves, God, about their faith and about anything concerning you, Lord Father God, and even what's going on, Lord Father God. Things that we have never seen, Father God, but now things are touching home. Father God, you're shaking up the tree, Lord Father God, to see where we really are in faith and trust and belief of who you say you are and who your son is, oh God. Hallelujah. So, Father God, if some of us here, Father, have never understood you or have never tasted and seen the goodness of the Lord, that you would, Father God, release that goodness tonight, Lord. That you would, Father God, show forth your love and your compassion and your mercy, Lord. Yes, God, heal, deliver, deliver, Father. Do what only you can do, Lord. We come against, Father God, minds of confusion tonight, Lord God. Any, Father God, unalignment of chemistry right now, Lord God, we speak alignment to it right now, Lord. Every door of distraction, wherever the enemy has found place to come in, Father God, and just rest or re and reside, Father God, in anything, in houses and homes concerning this line, even on the line itself, Lord God. Yes, God, we come against it right now, Father God. We cut it at its root. We expose it and we say, enemy, we know your plans. We know your plans. We know your tricks. We know your tactics. So we decree and we declare the blood of Jesus upon everything, everything that is against righteousness and holiness tonight on this line. Hallelujah. That Jesus Christ and him and him alone may be exalted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you that the Father, the telephone, the technical lines, whatever lines, Father, concern in this satellites, Lord, there will be nothing, Father God. There will be nothing. That will be, Father God, touched. And even as Pastor Raul, Father God, ministers, Lord Father God, that his thoughts would be precise, Father, moving in accordance with the Holy Spirit. We come against spirits of slumber and complacency and lackadaisicalness, Lord God, that you would just quicken, Lord Father God. You would just quicken that they wouldn't even bring any kind of distraction, Father God, to uh, Brother Raul right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God, I thank you for salvation, Lord. And even now, God, wherever we have, Father God, been even been deceived in any area, Father God, we, we, we may have thought even presently, God, that, that we are saved, though, Father God, but you see something else, Lord, that you would, Father God, bring conviction, that you would bring conviction. We come against even now the spirit of condemnation, for there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And even right there, that is evidence that if there is condemnation, then we have to even ask ourselves, are we truly in Christ Jesus? Are we truly moving with him? Because if we're truly in Christ, we know that we're just broken vessels. We know that we're a work in process. We know that we will have constant repentance, but not to justify our sins and our actions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, I thank you, Father God, that you have caused breath to remain in us, oh God, because you said it's your will that no man perish, God. So whatever you have to do tonight, whatever you have to shake up, whatever you have to, Father God, stir up, even whatever's being stirred up right now, God, through any trial or tribulation, I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this is where we're established. And even now, let those needs come forth on the line that we can pray for one another. Give the heart of courage, Father God, for us even to be able to, Father God, confess our faults, confess our frailties, that we don't come on this line, that we are, we're just holy and righteous and we just can't wait for the Lord to come back. Yes, we don't want him to come back finding things in us that are undone. And he'll say, why didn't you go on that prayer line that you were on every Friday and ask the brothers and sisters to pray for you? Yes, Lord. So I pray, Father God, that need would come up on the line, upon all these Zoom lines that are going on, that there would be true confession, true confession, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, there's other religions, oh God, that they, they confess to a person that they don't even know their lifestyle, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that even in these last days that you are sanctifying and setting people, Father God, uh, for, for your will, Father God, people that are anointed, people that are consecrated, people that have that call of a priest, oh God, that can bring the sins of people, Father God, to you in righteousness and holiness, Lord. 
Yes, God, move, Father. Move according to this prayer. Move according to your heart, God. As it is in heaven, let it be done here on earth, even now, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I glorify your name. Whoever is distracted from even coming on this line, Father God, I come against that distraction right now in the name of Jesus. And they would be, Father God, magnetized. They would be wooed to pick up that phone right now and to get on this Zoom line, God, that they can receive their blessing that they can receive that breakthrough. We come as intercessors, Father God, with eyes to see, knowing the needs, oh, Father God, of the people. Hallelujah. And we ask all these things, Father God, whatever has been failed to ask. Yes, God, may you not fail to grant. And we ask these things, Father God, in the precious name of your son, Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And as we unify ourselves right now, we ask the angels of worship to just release Release the anointing from above to break every yoke, even upon our sister Oprah right now, God, that she will be, Father God, in holy alignment, oh God. Father God, crying out holy, holy, holy with heaven's, Father God, orchestra right now, God. We thank you, Father. We praise you. Anoint her lungs. Anoint her, Father, vocal cords. Anoint her mind, Father. Shut down self right now, God. Then you can have a conduit in a vessel, Father, to release the worship of heaven right now, God. We ask all this in your name. We pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sister Opal, one minute. Yes, Lord. Let us just get our hearts in the place of worship because we're here to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We forget about ourselves, our situations, and we just focus on him tonight, the audience of one. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit, I will open up inside. You provide the fire, I will be the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill us up, Lord. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. You provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice, you provide the spirit, I will open 
open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up until I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up until I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up. Until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, Lord, until I overflow, God. Yes, Lord, fill us up with your presence tonight, Lord. We need you tonight, Father. We need you tonight. We need you tonight, Holy Spirit. Fill us up to the overflow. Thank you, mighty Father, that you are our Alpha, Lord God. You are Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we praise you and we glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. We love you, Lord. We worship and adore you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, you are Alpha and Omega, we worship you are
worthy to be praised. We give you We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We worship and we adore you. We worship and we adore you. We worship you, Lord God. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, mighty Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, we come tonight to say we love you, Lord. We love you, we love you, we love you. Yes, God. We worship. Yes, we exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. Take joy, my King. In what you hear tonight, Lord. Yes, my Lord. We lift our voices and we say we love you, God. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We exalt. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh Lord, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, 
Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh. exalt and we magnify and we lift up your holy name tonight we praise you father we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the glory hallelujah jesus hallelujah jesus we bless your name god we thank you we thank you we thank you blessed holy spirit we welcome apostle raul in jesus name amen welcome everyone to god's house and to the fellowship of God's people. Hallelujah. We thank God for uh, preserving us and keeping all of us safe and healthy throughout the week. And uh, let's go into the word of God. So I want to continue on what we stopped last Friday. And uh, we were talking about uh, how God speaks to his people. And one of the verses that we saw in Psalm, uh, David says that God speaks once and we have to hear twice. I heard it twice. God speaks once and I heard it twice that glory and power belongs to our Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. So that is the way of God. His word is truth. His word is not an advice. His word is uh, not so, uh, something that we can consider or not consider. Uh, he can he can he is not a man that he should lie everything everything that god speaks it's truth everything that god speaks is life everything that he speaks is spirit 
okay that and jesus speaks in john chapter 6 verse 63 that the words i speak to you are spirit and they are life those are not no, those are not nominal theology that we are supposed to learn and increase our head knowledge no 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 those are established truths those are the way of life that give life uh, and reveal the true life of god to mortal human beings okay hallelujah so we are going to continue on that note about the dealings of god with a person or about the life of a person by the name balaam or balaam or balaam i call him balaam so whatever you pronounce him so balaam in the bible uh, many christians uh, have the opinion that balaam was a servant of god or because balaam could hear god balaam could communicate with god but it is not so balaam was not a servant of god balaam was a sorcerer he was a soothsayer operating in the office of divination okay and that spirit that he operates in it's a threat for the children of god okay so if the children uh, so there are many verses and there are many speakings and utterance of balaam that he spoke about the children of israel and uh, people use that verse uh, we will come to that at a later stage but uh, i want you to i want you to consider those who know balaam those who have read your bible i want you to consider for a time what i am saying and then we will go into the word of god and see who balaam was and this balaam that i am speaking about who appeared in the old testament during the time of moses the era and the way and the way of balaam became a doctrine that creeped into the ancient church which was during the time of john the apostle okay so this doctrine and this era of balaam the ways of balaam creeped into the church creeped into the lives of people the same way of balaam and what balaam did became a doctrine or became a way that christians in the early church we will come to that in the book of revelation started to adapt to that doctrine okay and we will see what jesus says about balaam okay so first of all before going into the life and uh, the so called ministry that balaam did uh, you got to know that balaam was not a servant of god but he was a sorcerer diviner and a soothsayer who performed spiritual activities for the gain of money and profit okay that was balaam so the ministry that he used to do first of all it was not for god but the spiritual activities he used to perform of sorcery divination and sooth saying why he used to perform because uh, to gain money and um, profit from the spiritual activities that he performed are we together okay hallelujah so before going into the life of balaam we will see what the bible says about him who is he joshua chapter 13 let's open our bibles to the book of joshua chapter 13 and let's read verse 22 joshua 13 22 the children of israel also killed with the sword balaam the son of beor so this is his end how he ended okay the children of israel when joshua was conquering the nations this is that time in joshua chapter 13 verse 22 the children of israel also killed with the sword balaam the son of beor the soothsayer among those who were killed by them so the book of joshua refers to him as what a soothsayer we will come to what is soothsaying it's one and the same it's similar sorcery divination and soothsaying it's all similar let's go to jude the book of jude in the new uh, in the new testament the book of jude that is before revelation and let's read the verse 11 it, it has only one chapter let's read verse 11 <coughs> woe to them for they have gone in the way of cain and have run greedily in the error of balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of cora okay so balaam was the one who was a greedy man who would who would do everything to gain profit so 
Jude is speaking to some actually when you read the book of Jude and you see the context in which Jude is speaking he is speaking to servants of God he is speaking to preachers who have come in the church with different doctrines and to them he is speaking some of them who are what who to them because some of them are going in the way of Cain and some of them are also going in the greediness running greedily in the era of Balaam okay in kingdom in the kingdom of God we don't serve God for money we got to you got to realize that if you are doing ministry you are not coming your you are not uh, doing ministry to earn a salary always understand that in kingdom of god what god gives to us is rewards and not a salary okay hallelujah so in the in but but, but these belams who carry the way of belam they have made the kingdom of god a business and i am not saying that uh, pastors cannot be paid salary no 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 that is not what i am saying but you are all all your intention is that whatever i want to do if even i want to pray for a person for 5 minutes call if the person is supposed to call me and i am supposed to pray for that person for how many minutes 5 minutes i will charge for those 5 minutes so what i am saying is those people who are all out for money all out every minute that they spend oh i prayed for you 10 minutes this is the charge that i have i i have to take the way of bela hallelujah amen i hope you are listening okay so let's so this is what jude is saying what what was he what is he saying he uh, have run greedily in the era of bela for profit for profit okay hallelujah let's go to revelation chapter 2 now what does jesus has to say revelation chapter 2 verse 14 what is the color of the words in your bible is it red okay so that means jesus is speaking there revelation chapter 2 verse 14 let's see what jesus has to say now now uh, now this is the opinion of not opinion this is the word of jesus i told you and which is truth and uh, so you got to consider what jesus is speaking belam was not a servant of god okay you got to understand that many people uh, many christians believe that so maybe they have taken belam in a wrong way but today let's let's understand because this belam is destroying the lives of the children of god this spirit or this doctrine okay is destroying the lives of the children of god and when i was praying the last week the lord told me teach them about the way of belam and take them into the revelation and we will pray on some points and break the hold of this spirit and this doctrine and deception over over the lives of people and over the church today or tonight okay hallelujah revelation chapter 2 verse 14 but i have a few things against you because you have these those who hold the doctrine of belam everyone say the doctrine of belam say that again the doctrine of belam okay so jesus is speaking to who? to the church in pergamos and he is saying in verse 14 i have a few things against you because you have you have there those who hold to the doctrine of belam so many in that place in that church are having a doctrine which is not the doctrine of the, of the bible of the, of god but it's the doctrine of what belam now the 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 life that belam lived or the error that he committed has now been transformed into a doctrine hallelujah as like i told you about the seed of the woman and the seed of the devil the seed of the devil was not so but now in our times that that seed has become and being transformed into a whole system that has power over the earth so from that time till this time things start to grow so that spirit in which belam those spirits those were multiple evil spirits in which belam operated in the book in the book of numbers during the time of moses now when it has gone from centuries after century it has become a doctrine now which has creeped inside the church the same spirit that would try to attack the children of israel through belam we will come to that how belam 
wanted to attack the children or children of Israel. Okay, we'll come to that. So the same spirit that wanted to attack the children of Israel is still now trying to find its expression in today's church and attack the children of God, attack the Christians. So now Jesus is uh, bringing to light that the false doctrine Jesus is specifying that false doctrines that people are believing in the church of Pergamos is called the doctrine of Balaam okay what he did who taught Balak Balak was the king of the Moabites okay uh, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality so these are the traits of Balaam. Okay, what does what does those people who hold to the doctrine of Balaam do? Those preachers teach that uh, sexual immorality is okay. Okay, they would come near to uh, they would come near to a lady who is not their wife, and they will touch the, and do anything, and it's okay. That is not a sin. God has considered it because I am a servant of God. That is Balaam. Now that, that is that those are the traits of Balaam and what they do they will teach people to eat things or food that is sacrificed to idols. Now I don't know if it happens in the US uh, it may happen there because it's all over the country but India it's it's the sacrificing food to idols it's it happens a lot okay food that is sacrificed to idols is also brought in in when i was in the office working in the corporate before i came in ministry uh, they used to bring the things sacrificed to idols so what does it mean that means uh, the those who hold the doctrine of balaam is a casual christian living you can do whatever you want to do you can take part in every demonic activities to invite demons in your life that's okay god does not God does not uh, goes against. So that is the doctrine of Balaam. So that is the same traits of Jezebel. But I will not go today in Jezebel. Jezebel is a different topic altogether. This spirit of Jezebel, I know her very well. The original Jezebel of the Bible I am talking about. The original Jezebel, I have faced this Jezebel. And I know the powers this spirit carry. So again, Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 just go we will go for there for few seconds and then go come back to Balaam nevertheless revelation chapter 2 verse 20 I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess she is a prophet and uh, supposed to operate in the prophetic anointing and she is a woman and she calls herself a prophet what she does to teach and seduce my servant to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols okay hallelujah many churches you go they will never address sin oh you 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 do what you want to do but just be in bondage with us don't go just keep on paying money to us do what you want to do oh you can so they teach that sexual immorality is okay you will not know it from the pulpit when you come in that place for the first time but even as you start going there and knowing the people or knowing the leaders you sexual immorality will be introduced to you because the leaders themselves involve themselves and, and they say it's okay what's the problem in that Go, uh, so I know I know cases where the pastor would come to a lady who is not even his wife and come God has told me to sleep with you they use the name of God to do such things. That is Balaam. That is again Jezebel. Okay. And oh my. Hallelujah. Are we together? Sh should we continue today? Okay. Listen to me. Now, uh, after that, it says food offered to idols. So that means casual Christian living. You can live without having the conscious, without having your conscience led by the Holy Spirit. That means do whatever you want. God is happy with you do whatever you want god loves you god is happy with you your conscience that is supposed to be led by the holy spirit the bible says do not grieve the holy spirit you will not at all understand the the person of the holy spirit in such a church or in such a place where the influence is of the doctrine of balaam or of the doctrine of jezebel 
or of the spirit of Jezebel influencing that place or of that so called church ok hallelujah so are we understanding now so now we will go to the doctrine to the life of Balaam so these are the verses that describe who Balaam was so it is very clear that Balaam was not a servant of God now many Christians will come to Numbers chapter 22 where I am going now and read the chapter read the whole chapter and tell me brother Raul how can you say that because Balaam heard from God God used to came, come to Balaam how can God come to a, 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 a evil person how can God, God come to a person who practices occultism I will come to that I will come to that God can speak to such people upon certain conditions okay hallelujah God can even speak to a diviner God can even speak to anyone who practices wickedness and occultism God can speak to them under certain condition and those are urgent uh, condition because of which God had to speak to Balaam we will come to that but let's understand first of all a gist of what is divination soothsaying and sorcery it's all one and the same okay it's all similar I mean to say there are certain difference, different little difference of the meaning, but it's all the divination suit saying or the sorcery, it's similar to the prophetic anointing that is there in the kingdom of God. So this kind of demonic anointing that is being acquired through different demonic spirits, it's a counterfeit of the prophetic anointing. Okay, so divination suit saying is the counterfeit of the prophetic office that is there in God's kingdom. It's a counterfeit. Counterfeit. What happens there? Where with the help of demonic spirits, lives of people are being read and the future is predicted. They predict the future. They also read the lives of people. And um, sorcery, that means power is gained. What? Power is gained from demonic spirits uh, to control the minds of people to perform divination. So, it's all and the same. So, it's about, you know, I went for a, let me give you an example. I went for a holiday with my family. And uh, it was a hill station, we went on the hills. So, when I was uh, coming to take my car out of the parking area, a man followed me. A man followed me who was not a Christian. He was, uh, he was a kind of astrologer or a soothsayer he followed me and he started asking me sir 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 do you want to know your future do you want to have uh, something to know about your life can i tell you something about my life and my spirit would not accept him so i rejected him i told no go away from me go away from me but that man followed me till my car so i went in, in till the time i went inside my car i i shut the door of my car he was banging on my mirror Sir, 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 do you want to know something? So, when I said, no, I don't want to know. And why, why would they come behind us? They would come behind us because they want to say something to us and acquire money from us. So, I was telling him uh, uh, continuously, no, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know. But he was coming behind me. And then he started to say, sir, you have a business. You are losing money in your business. I told false. I don't have a business because I was doing ministry at that time. So, and then he started to, so the first few words were incorrect, inaccurate. And then he became so accurate. He started to tell things about my family. Not a Christian, not a Christian. He, he is an idol worshipper. Started to say things about my family. This and that and this and that. And then when he was not listening, I told him, uh, leave my presence. Get out from here, otherwise I will start prophesying on you. So, th then he left, then he left, then he went away, okay? Then after, now I was, since I was on a holiday, I could not go immediately and uh, spend time with God because we have to go in certain places with my family. But I was praying and asking God, look, what was that? What is that kind of spirit? That is long back, now some years back. And what was the spirit? And after he spoke to me, there was condemnation that was coming in my heart because many things, like he would, he would twist he would twist everything and speak to me. Yeah. As if the word of knowledge that is coming should take me away from God. He would say things like uh, money is not in your hands 
and money when it comes it goes out of your hand and this and that and this and that and he would say things as if uh, the ministry that actually he did not point he does not even knows he did not even address that i am a christian he did not the spirits did not tell him all those things but he will tell everything that would take me away from god and attach me to that man to those spirits oh he is telling true let me go there and take counsel for do we don't have the word of god so that is the kind of attraction pulling the spirits have to you which take you away from the word from the counsel of god's ways from the relationship of the holy spirit and attach you to a certain kind of a prophetic dimension which is not coming from the holy spirit and that is the feeling i started to have in me and when i went to my hotel room and started to pray that night the lord gave me a study on that spirit and i started to understand those spirits okay hallelujah are we together so this divination and suit saying is a counterfeit of the prophetic anointing i told you and where they use the powers that comes from demon to prophesy to even predict the future it's not god who told them the future but they will use that demonic networking that you know the demonic hierarchy is very organized is very organized that is what is written in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 where paul says that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities against power, rulers of the darkness of this age and and all so on and so forth so there is a hierarchy they are very organized uh one of the thing is devil is all not not all knowing like god why but the devil is without having that ability of all knowing like god of omnipotence and omniscience but yet he would know many things about certain area sitting at one place why because he has a demonic networking that takes place okay and he has demons assigned in every territory he has demons assigned over every church he has a record of the servants of god everything he has a record he is a organized man a personality not a man a organized personality who would work in a organized way that devil who is your enemy who who is our enemy very organized person so how they how would they predict future they would themselves program some things to happen on earth i would not come to that but the virus that came was already preplanned by whom by the enemy and they predicted the same thing in the movies they predicted the same things in so many things in that comes through entertainment on which the devil has a hold and you would say oh these guys this this uh, this cartoonist or this movie producer is a prophet no he is not a prophet he is possessed by a demonic spirit that's why they can predict in 2010 uh, what is going to happen in 2020 they can predict everything why because they themselves have programmed those things to happen so it's not that they are the prophets of god and that was belam about whom we are studying okay hallelujah he god is not with him and nor he is a proved servant of god but demonic spirits would help him predict demonic spirits will give him power if he will say something about your life belam it will happen tomorrow that is the power he carries the bible says if he curses something it will remain cursed it we if he blessed that is that is his ability that is his gift belam's gift anything he curses it's cursed anything he blesses it's blessed are we together hallelujah those are the powers i have i have met with such people who have those demonic spirits and those demonic spirits bow down before the name of jesus they don't function in front of a true, true servant of god i have met such such people if if any one of you wants to get married that evil spirit in that person has to speak and tomorrow you will get your life partner by tomorrow it's it happens so fast there's a demonic spirit you will get your life partner but what will happen after you get married to that person that get, through that prophecy your life will be terrible you will go so away from god so away from god after that marriage that it will be very difficult for you to come back that is what demonic spirits do they operate in divination they give prophetic words which will happen and you think oh it's god no it's not god 
beloved do not believe every spirit test every spirit that is what john the apostle is was teaching are you understanding guys oh my we are not even a, we have not even started this is just the introduction of belam hallelujah numbers chapter 22 let's go there now now we will let's go to numbers 22 Ah, hallelujah so we will read from verse 1 onwards numbers 22 verse 1 onwards then the children of israel moved and camped in the plains of moab on the side of the jordan across the jericho now belak the son of zippor saw all that israel had done to amorites and moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they are they were many and moab was sick with dread because of the children of israel uh, so moab said to the elders of midian now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field and balak the son of zippor was the king of the moabites at that time okay hallelujah uh, am i audible okay am i audible okay then he sent messengers to balaam the son of beor at pethor which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people to call him saying look a people has come from egypt see they cover the face of the earth and are sitting next to me therefore please come at once curse this people for me for they are too mighty for me perhaps i shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land for i know that he whom whom you bless is blessed and he whom you curse is cursed that is the gift belam has okay so the elders of moab and the elders of midian departed with the diviner's fee underline diviner's fee because belam would not work without money he wants money even if he speaks to people for one minute he will ask money i gave you one minute i will charge you for it give me money okay that is belam that is the that is the spirit he carries Okay, diviner's fee in the hand. And why diviner's fee? Because he is not a servant of God. He is a diviner. Okay, and they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Balak. Okay, let me give you a background. What is happening here? Israel, under the leadership of the servant of God Joshua, they are conquering territories. No one is able to stop them, and they are supposed to come to Moab. And before they come to Moab, the king of Moab knows that they he cannot defeat this mighty. mighty army that is led by god himself the jehova god and that's why he tried tries to seek spiritual help now kings of those time even kings of our time prime ministers and president do you know how they function they seek spiritual help help from famous diviners from top class satanist they will you don't know you don't know your leaders political leaders i'm talking about if something they want to make it happen they will go to a diviner they will go to a high class elite soothsayer this this soothsayer will not be half naked as you see the pictures in india you know many of the american people consider india half naked people doing all those things no 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 these soothsayers wear a very expensive dress they are high class people in the elite class and so this is what the king of moab is doing since he knows that i cannot defeat this people who are led by this god jehova god the god of israel they will destroy me let me consult a occultic person let me consult the most famous and the most powerful person i know and the most powerful person in the office of divination was belam whoever he blesses remains blessed whoever he curses remains cursed that is his power that is the power that the demonic spirits gave him okay so he gave the diviner's fee and sent people to hire who belam okay so let's go ahead we we are going to read, read till verse 13 i am on verse 7 we are going to read till verse 13 i hope every one of you who are available here are opening your bible please open your bible when i am reading read with me okay verse 8 
and he said to them okay they came to belam verse 8 the bible says belam said to them lord here tonight and i will bring back word to you as the lord speaks to me so the princes of moab stayed with belam stay with me okay verse 9 then god came to belam and said who are these men with you so belam belam said to god belak the son of zippor king of moab has sent me sent to me saying look a people has come out of egypt and they cover the face of the earth come now curse them for me perhaps i shall be able to overpower them and drive them out and god said to belam you shall not go with them you shall not curse the people for they are blessed so belam rose in the morning and said to the princes of belak go back to your land for the lord has refused to give me permission to go with you who is this sorcerer that is now taking the permission of the lord most high a man who is a occultic person okay understand this situation if okay you have to lend your ears totally to the holy spirit even when i am speaking now so that you can understand the revelation and the meaning about what is happening here first of all we saw that belam is a sorcerer he is a diviner who operates through demonic spirits you would ask me why would brother then god come to him and speak to him why and why would he even obey god now as of this time he is not obeying god his he is obeying god out of fear because the fear of the lord is upon him i will tell you why and explain it to you how the fear of god and why the fear of god is upon him okay hallelujah the fear of the lord has overtaken this man who is a soothsayer and this man who seemed to be powerful the most uh, powerful person whatever he says it happens and this man is has become now in subject to god most high and uh, god is uh, has put a leash on a yoke on his shoulder and god is controlling this man now okay now when god comes to a soothsayer then god comes to a diviner when a servant of god stands before a diviner who is a true servant of god carrying the power of the holy spirit that diviner will become totally in subject to god and his commandments i will tell you why okay stay with me let's go to genesis chapter 31 let me explain to, hello hallelujah are you are, are you able to listen to me okay Genesis chapter 31 Let's go to Genesis chapter 31 to understand this And let's read from verse 22 Okay verse 22 and Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled Then he took his brother and with him and pursued him for 7 days journey and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead Laban was on a pursuit to destroy who Jacob because jacob had left without the permission of laban laban was a evil man he was a wicked man who changed the wages of jacob you know the story hallelujah are we good bible readers and students so you know you know the story how laban treated jacob and laban treated jacob very wickedly changed his wages so many times and now without asking permission of laban because god told jacob to flee he fled okay and now god is with jacob because jacob is doing what god is telling to him the servant of god is in the will of god the servant of god is obeying god as in is in the will of god so and at the same time this laban the enemy was pursuing jacob to destroy him to take him over so he pursued him 7 days journey and when they came they he overtook him in the mountains of gilead but what happened in verse 24 verse 24 but god had come to laban the syrian in a dream by night god coming to a wicked person in a dream by night and said to him be careful you that you speak to jacob neither good nor bad hallelujah when you do god's will no soothsayer no diviner will be able to release his negative spells on you 
गॉड विल कम टू हिम एंड स्टॉप हिम माखो या कान सकारा बाश पकटा हाले लू या आई यू एबल टू यर मी ओके डिड यू डिड यू यर वॉट आई वॉज सेंग ओके वेन वेन यू आर इन द विल ऑफ गॉड एंड ओबेइंग गॉड देर विल बी नो डिवाइन सूच से who will be able to release negative spell even if they want to do it they have such such an anger against you to kill you but they are not even able to come near you because your god is is stopping them your god your god is coming the god of jacob came to laban his enemy and told laban don't do speak even speak nothing anything good or anything bad to him okay Okay let me take you to another example then we will come to Balaam okay i am explaining you what is happening there and why god is speaking to Balaam just because god spoke to Balaam it does not means he is a servant of god no 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 so why, there is a reason why god is coming to Balaam genesis chapter 20 let's go there genesis chapter 20 hallelujah was One onwards. Let's read from verse one onwards. Okay, and Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, "She is my sister." And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, "Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken." for she is a man's wife but abimelech had not come near her and he said lord will you slay a righteous nation also did he not say to me she is my sister and and she even she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands i have done this now listen carefully verse 6 and god said to him in a dream yes i know that you did this in the integrity of your heart for i also withheld you from sinning against me therefore i did not let you touch her my god this is your god speaking this is your god speaking to your enemy hallelujah god who had chosen the womb of sara to bring the seed of god in the womb the lord because she was a child of god chosen for the purpose of god god did not let this man touch sara and god you know now let me come to you why god will come and speak to a sorcerer this is why god comes and speaks to a sorcerer are we together okay hallelujah i am i am trying my best by the help of the holy spirit uh, tonight to explain you this mysteries okay hallelujah so god came to abimelech and told i have kept you away from sara because she is my chosen woman through whom i will bring the seed my seed into the earth, on on the earth okay so go so verse 7 now therefore restore the man's wife for he is a prophet by the way it is not any man testifying of abraham that he is a god from heaven tells that abraham is a prophet prophet hallelujah the title is given by god from, by, by god himself that abraham is a prophet you 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 would you compare abraham with with the prophets of today abraham does oh how can abraham be a prophet he does not has a ministry he does not has cars he does, does not pro, tells about the lives of people no the qualities and the a prophet is a man who walks with god very closely that is a prophet even though he does not has the you know operates in so called gifts that christians consider to be a prophet so okay let's not go there let's not go there for he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall live but if you do not restore her know that you shall surely die you and all who are yours you see that so ab abimelech got very afraid though he is a very powerful king by the way he is the king of egypt very powerful but yet god came to him in the night and told him if you don't do what i am telling you you shall die and that is what happened with balaam that's why he obeyed god 
out of fear of the Lord killing him. He knew. And why did the Lord speak to why did the Lord speak to Balaam? Now you tell me. Because of the children of Israel. Balaam, if he releases a curse, you know, children of Israel will be cursed. So God came in between. You soothsayer, however powerful you are, I will shut up your mouth and you will speak what I want you to speak. Ampo rikamanda e rakaya rabakada. Hallelujah. A soothsayer assigned by the devil against your life, a diviner who wants to speak curses, God takes over his mouth and he wants to curse you, but blessings comes out, comes out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Oh, this is your God. Hallelujah. Rebona <laughs> Raman Shanta. Okay, okay. Let's go to Numbers. Let's go back to Numbers chapter 22. Okay. Are we together? Are we understanding? Now is your question clear? Why God came to Balaam? Why God spoke to Balaam? And why Balaam is obeying God? Taking these scriptures. Okay. Yeah, Jaya understood. Taking these scriptures. Christians think Balaam is a servant of God. No, 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 no. You have not read your and understood the Bible through the Holy Spirit. Okay. Hallelujah. You have got to understand that this Balaam is not a good person. He is not a good person. Uh, he, he is all set uh, greedy to gain money and to curse Israel. But what he wants to speak, he is not able to speak. Because the fear of God has taken over his life. Because, hallelujah, he is not able to speak any curse on God's people. Hallelujah. May the Lord control the mouth of your enemies today. In Jesus mighty name. Okay. Hallelujah. Let me go to a verse and then come back to Numbers 22. Even as I am reminded of this verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Okay. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Yet in all things, okay, it's not 37, 31. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That is true. If That is a reality that Christians don't know. And that reality is only applied when the child of God obeys God and is in the will of God. Are we together? Joshua and the army were in the will of God. Joshua was walking in the ways of God. He was not moving to the right or to the left as per the instruction given to him in Joshua chapter 1. Jacob was doing what God told him. That's why God protected, protected Jacob. I don't know, in the last revival meeting that we took in the More Than Conquerors, I told you about the Zerubbabel and Jeshua who were building the temple. They were doing the work of God, the agenda of God. They were not building the temple because they wanted to build. The Lord told them to build. And that's why whatever opposition was coming against them, the Lord was rebuking, the, rebuking Satan. Okay? Though the ministry you are doing, though the work for God you are doing is very small, no one knows it. But if you are doing it by listening and hearing God and obeying Him, no, no sorcerer, no diviner, no devil can stand against you if you are in the will of God. I am telling you, that is the power of staying in the will of God. Then the word applies which says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There are conditions to it. There are conditions to it. When, when, when you walk in the will of God, and you walk, I don't have time to take you to Zechariah chapter 3. Uh, note it down and go, go back. One, one, once this meeting is over, read Zechariah chapter 3. How Jeshua, Satan was accusing Jeshua, the high priest, who was building God's temple. Satan was accusing him. But God did not listen, heard or took the accusation of Satan. Why? Because Jeshua was doing God's will. So there is power when you obey God. A, a man or a woman who is living a consecrated life. A man or a woman who is living a life obedient to God. Come what may. Come what may. They are obedient to God. Satan cannot stand against such people. Those are the saints of old 
who stood for God like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Even, <coughs> even the King Nebuchadnezzar could not stand against the powers and the gift that these men carried. You see that? Because they had a backbone and they would not bow down to Satan. They would not, however, whatever, even at the cost of their lives, they would stay in the will of God. And if you stay in the will of God, like uh, he did with Balaam, God would not allow Balaam, the sorcerer, to curse Israel. He would not allow. He took over his heart and mind. Okay? If God be for us, who can stand against us? No one can. No one can. No spells can work on you. No attacks can overtake you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Are we together? Let's go to Numbers chap, uh, Numbers chapter 22. Let's go back there. And let's read from verse what? <coughs> 14 onwards. And the princes of Moab went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Okay. Now, please lend your ears to the Holy Spirit. And uh, listen to me carefully what I am saying. Uh, so, Balak, uh, so what happened? Balaam told, I am not going to say uh, curse Israel. Go back. Okay. Then, verse 14, the Bible says, And the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Then Balak again sent princes more numerous and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me. Okay, verse 17. For I will certainly honor you greatly and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse this people for me. So, you said, I don't want this job. So, the company increased the salary on your offer letter. We were, we were supposed to pay you per month or whatever you I know you get per salary bi-weekly but let's consider per month the company was supposed to give you an offer letter uh, per month salary was uh, $20,000 okay and then when you rejected they came with an offer of $80,000 per month to Belam okay now was 17 uh, some more money some more honor some more recognition now see how Balaam speaks. He is so, oh my God, he is a hypocrite, Balaam. How he speaks, you see. Then Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. And everyone of the Christian community clapped their hands. Oh, Balaam is a true servant of God. Wait, wait, wait. You see what Balaam is speaking. Balaam is saying, if this king is supposed to give me, what? The house full of silver and gold. I will not go beyond the word of my Lord. I will not go beyond to do nothing less or more. I will obey the word of my Lord. He is even proclaiming, this is my God, I am obeying. Oh, these soothsayers, Balaam, acts as if he is a true servant of God. That is deception. That is where deception creeps in the church. These people who use spirits, demonic spirit to do divination and soothsaying, use the title of the servants of God like Prophet this, Prophet Balaam, Apostle Balaam, Balaam, Pastor Balaam. And see how he is speaking to attract the attention of so-called believers. He speaks like this. Huh? Hallelujah. What did he say? If even the house full of silver is given to me, I will not go beyond the word of the Lord. This is what he is saying. Now let's go to verse 19. Let's go to verse 19. See his hypocrisy. Now therefore, please you also stay here tonight that I may know that what more the Lord has to say to me. Verse 18, he is saying, I will not go beyond the word of the Lord. And verse 19, he breaks the word of the Lord. Immediately. So he... he he speaks some things from his mouth and there is something else in his heart. The greed of money. Guys, are you understanding what I am teaching tonight? Hallelujah. Remove your mute and say Amen. amen. Okay. Hallelujah. 
I am teaching you Balaam. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is Balaam. If you if you will hear Balaam preaching on the from the pulpit, you will clap for him. You will say amen to him, but you don't know the spirit in him. He will say certain things. I stand for God. I do this. That is what Balaam was preaching in verse eighteen. Whatever money comes to me, I will not take the money because I will not go beyond the word of the Lord. And verse nineteen, what he says: Stay here tonight. Let me check out what more the Lord has to speak to me. But God has already told you, don't go with them. What more God will tell you? <laughs> the greed of money, the greed of material wealth, the spirits in him. Hallelujah! That is hypocrisy. That is a wolf. in the clothing of gospel of of the oh my god but inside what he is giving people is lies that are destroying the lives of people in the clothing of a sheep but inside he is a wolf hallelujah okay okay so so tell me one thing god has told me don't go with this people don't curse my people but yet after the offer increased first of all he said i will not go beyond the word of the lord but second Again, he is breaking the word of Lord, word of the Lord, and telling, "Stay here and let me hear more from God." God already had asked him, "What? What was the first question of God to him? Who are these people with you?" I don't like these people, but yet he is asking those people to again stay in his house. That is Bilam. Hallelujah. That is how many Christians operate. Once God tells them something, and they say, ah, "We believe God," and again they do the same thing. they say we obey god but actually they are breaking god's commandments but with their mouth they want to show people they are obedient oh my belam is in you that spirit is in you and that needs to be casted out tonight in jesus name oh my hallelujah okay i want to take some time and go to second kings to cover this topic to cover this incident a little bit more in depth let's go to second kings chapter 5 and i want you to consider comparing belam with the prophet elisha who was a true prophet of god and how he reacted to a similar offer that was given to him okay so that we may understand the difference between a sorcerer and a true servant of god a true prophet of god okay um uh, hallelujah second kings chapter 5 let's go there second kings chapter 5 and we will read from verse 15 uh i hope all of you know the story of neman who was who was healed okay verse 15 second kings chapter 5 verse 15 and he returned to the man of god and he and all his aids and came and stood before him and he said indeed now i know there is no god in all the earth except in israel now therefore please take a gift from your servant who is speaking here Neman is giving gift and money and some material wealth to Elisha offering Elisha some money verse 16 but he said Elisha said as the lord lives before whom i stand i will receive nothing and he urged him to take it but he refused so this is a true prophet once he speaks he will stay true on his word he will not change his mind once elisha said i don't want your money there is a reason why he did not take the money there is a revelation behind it okay it's not because he did not want there is a revelation the money was cursed and the intention of him offering money to the servant of god was bad was evil that's why he did not took the money elisha okay and uh, so elisha said i don't want your money and after that the bible says he forced and told elisha again and no no take it take it take it but he refused i have said no means i have said no because god the holy spirit had indicated elisha don't take that money and elisha is a well, a prophet a true prophet will not go beyond will not go beyond the word of god and that is what belam is trying to copy counterfeit a true prophet i am a man who will not go beyond the word of god but in actual in your personal life in your heart you are going and breaking god's commandments left right and center but you are acting as a prophet you are not a prophet truly there are many actors on on the pulpit like belam and tonight we i want to expose 
and set the children of God free under the spell of Balaam. In Jesus name. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. So Elisha stayed true to the word that he spoke. Okay. Verse 17. So now I want to take you to bit a revelation about why he rejected the money. Elisha. Verse 17. So Naaman said, then if not, please let your servant be given two, two mule loads of earth. For your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Okay, stay. Stay with me. Listen to me. Now, Naaman is saying, okay, if, if you don't want to take the money, allow your servant, me, that I want to worship the Lord, your God only and no, no other idols because I know only your God, God of Israel is a true God. Okay. And verse 18, yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there and he leans on my hand and I bow down in the temple of Rimon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Neman, like Balaam. One thing he is saying, I want to only worship God and no idols. Then he is saying, but, 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 Elisha, but when I go with my master, the king of Syria, to the temple of Rimon, who is a false god, and when I lean on him and I bow down to Rimon, just ask God to forgive me. That means he knew the cause of his leprosy now. Okay? He knew the cause of his leprosy was bowing down to idols. And now, now I want to take, take to your notice and to your mind, to bring your mind to attention, the reason why he was offering money. He was offering money so that once Elisha, he satisfies Elisha, he can buy forgiveness of God for him with money. Are we understanding? Okay. The intention of Naaman offering money to Elisha. Let me come to that. To buy forgiveness. So that God, the Lord God will pardon him when he goes to Rimon worshipping. You, Oh my, that is a sorcerer spirit. Who wants to buy forgiveness? Who wants to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit with money? They I will come to that. Okay. Are you understanding now? Okay, let me take you. Some of you not understanding. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 8. And we will read from, let, let us skip some verses in the beginning. We don't have time. We will read from verse 9. Let's read from verse 9. It says, But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city hmm? and as astonished the people of Samaria claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is a great power of God. Now underline that the opinion of people about this Simon the so who was a sorcerer operating through evil spirits what did people believe about him? If you, got to, if you were to go to the village of Samaria and ask who is Simon, he is a servant of God. That is what they will say. They believed him to be someone, a great power of God. So he acted as a servant of God, as a holy man of God, the sorcerer. Hallelujah. That is sorcery. That is, they act as prophets. They are just actors. They act as apostles. They act as pastors, but they are not. Okay. So, okay, let me go ahead. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. Okay. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Oh my, this sorcerer has collaborated with Philip, the evangelist in ministry. That is what it is saying. He is stepping into God's ministry with a spirit of sorcery, with a background of sorcery. Are you understanding? Okay, stay with me. And was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. So, 
he was amazed to see the crowds being pulled by Philip with the gospel and now when he was losing his fame and recognition in Samaria he collaborated with Philip and he wanted to become like one of the apostles or evangelist in the kingdom of God this man and Philip also now Philip is an evangelist okay he does not have the discernment of an apostle. Apostle can see through the hearts of people because they are the ones very close with God. They have the mighty discerning gifts upon their head. Okay, so, so uh, Philip could not understand the spirit in him. So Philip kept him with himself. Okay, and he was going around with Philip and seeing the things being done by Philip. Verse 14. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. This, is, was, this was the way of the church. Once the evangelist goes and preaches the gospel, souls are saved. The apostles go to lay the foundation of the lives of people in strong doctrine. So that, okay, hallelujah. So, so, so uh, it, it's not like evangelize, do signs, wonders and miracles, leave those people. No, they need the apostolic teaching to lay the foundation of their life very strong in the Lord Jesus Christ for them to be rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ in the word of God that is the apostolic ministry to build people and present them perfect before Christ okay so okay any which ways we will not go into that so they sent Peter and John that is how the church functioned we see how the church functions okay verse 15 who the, when they had come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit for as yet he had had fallen upon none of them they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit another apostolic gift okay let's not go there verse 18 and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles hands the Holy Spirit was given he offered them money okay he offered them money why saying give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands any may receive the Holy Spirit sorcery in ministry everyone say sorcery in God's ministry are you understanding this is how when 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 servants of God do not discern today anyone is given the pulpit come and speak come and preach oh my god no pulpit is not a hanky panky stuff anyone can stand and say anything you have to be approved to stand on that pulpit and speak the word of God. Only, are you understanding? Even worship ministry, people are choosing people left, right and center just because, you know, the biggest problem, I am grieved in my spirit to see pastors who want to retain membership will give responsibility to people. Oh. They, pastors will have, I, I was in a church, pastor, my pastor, so called pastor had a meeting, leaders meeting, I was a leader in the church and uh, they will point out people, okay, this person is not coming from three months in the church, this person is not coming for four, from four months, what to do, what to do, then the pastor will say, he is not coming in the church, let us make him a worship leader, let us give him responsibility so that we may attract him to come to the church, that is the problem. Oh, he is still not coming. Let us make him the church leader. He will get some recognition, then he will come here. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is not a church. That is a club. Oh my, hallelujah. That is a club for entertainment you are creating. No, 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 it's not a church. Simon, hallelujah. He thought he can be like the apostles, laying hands on people and they receiving the Holy Spirit. And that's why, he gave money to Peter. Peter, take this money, give me this gift. What do you think? Hallelujah. If the preachers and the so-called prophets and apostles received this offer, they would, you are giving money? Come, I will impart to you. Receive the anointing. Receive the prophetic. Oh my. Hallelujah. You, you are giving me more money? Come sit on the first chair. First row you will sit. No one will be able to question you in my church. Because you are giving money. Hallelujah. Sorcery. Sorcery in the church. Hallelujah. Sorcerers in the church are giving, given space by people, by servants of God who cannot discern. 
by servants of God who themselves have greed of money. They give space to sorcerers like Simon. They give space to sorcerers like Balaam, who would, who would weigh everything in terms of money. Everything, everything in terms of money. Oh my, hallelujah. Okay, let's go ahead. What verse twenty? But Peter said to him, "Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God." He was expelled from the ministry. You have no portion with us, you sorcerer. You still have bitterness in your heart. Okay, verse twenty two. Repent therefore of this your wickedness. and pray god if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you for i see that you are poisoned with by bitterness and bound by iniquity hallelujah i don't have time to go into those things but oh my there were a lot of things in simon's life that peter saw through his eyes of the spirit he saw in simon's life and he said you you have no portion with us you are not going to minister with us get rid of your bitterness get rid of all those things you are not in right standing with god you think oh my the apostle peter is the again like elisha a true servant of god who does not falls in the offers or the trap of a lot of money because a true servant of god is detached is detached from the love of money zero greed okay as a servant of god if you became a servant of god you are a prophet having the title of a prophet and you are carrying greed in your heart there are high chances your the spirits will enter you high chances and you will destroy the people you who who are hearing you you are destroy the people who are hearing you hallelujah okay hallelujah let's go to another chapter acts chapter 16 let's go quickly Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16 verse 16 onwards. Acts chapter 16 verse 16 onwards. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. You see everywhere there is sorcery, everywhere there is divination, money is involved. This girl used to have a spirit of divination who can predict the future do fortune telling and what men used to do use the spirit inside the girl to accumulate money from people okay that is what was happening there in Ephesus then verse 17 this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying these men are the servants of the most high god who proclaim to us the way of salvation my god this spirit is even preaching the gospel You see a demon is preaching the gospel anyone can preach the gospel it's just words a demon preaching the gospel my god through the <laughs> and what you, you have to understand the revelation this girl possessed with a divination spirit demon what she did following who paul and following paul and us paul had associates so paul and the group the the apostles and the evangelist they were he, she was following paul and saying to the people so before paul was preaching the gospel she started to preach the gospel and what what she said these are the servants of the most high god came here to proclaim to us the way of salvation demon telling people to believe in jesus why would a demon preach the gospel and that to the gospel of salvation why to find similarity with the true servants of god to collaborate with them okay are we understanding so people would understand apostle paul what he is preaching this girl is also preaching that she is also the servant of god oh my <laughs> there are imposters who have come with the spirit of divination you don't even know <laughs> you don't even know hallelujah but the holy spirit is exposing them not for us not for, i am i am not here to pull anyone down no 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 i never criticize i am teaching you the mysteries for you to get liberated from those holds in your life hallelujah because the it's it is the intention of the holy spirit to bring this teaching tonight he told me to teach this 
Hallelujah. She was finding similarity. And when, when, when they will hear Paul preaching the gospel, they will say, Paul, that girl is also like you. She is preaching the same message, Paul. But Paul knows she has a demon. Oh my. Hallelujah. There is such a mess in the church today. There is, the church is messed up. There are so many voices around. People don't know which voice to hear. They are confused. They, they don't even discern. They are not even discerning. The Christians are falling down because they cannot discern. They hear each and everything. M many of them, um, you know, I think Paul Washer, he is a preacher. He is a preacher from uh, US. He said, God sends a false prophet among people to judge those who are disobeying him. So that those hearts of Christians who want not God, but prosperity, money and all those things, they will follow that false one. So the false preacher was sent allowed by God in the church to do a segregation. So that the true ones, the true ones, really true Christian, not namesake Christian, really true ones will be separated from the false preacher who truly love God and who are truly living by God. And by the way, those true Christians are very few. <laughs> are very few. You, you have to accept the fact. It's not a crowd. It's few people. It's few people. It's, there are, you will see a crowd in the US worshipping God, saying hallelujah. But <laughs> in that 10,000 people, you can pick up by numbers the few ones who really follow Jesus. That is... That is, uh, okay, hallelujah. Verse 18. And this she did for many days. Many days she was preaching the gospel. How? Not through the Holy Spirit. Through the spirit of divination. She was preaching the gospel. But Paul greatly annoyed. So Paul, why he was annoyed? Paul was annoyed because people were getting deceived. Paul was preaching, she was preaching. Paul was preaching, she was preaching. So Paul's work was hindered. That's why he was annoyed. And Paul knew this girl is preaching the gospel through a spirit of divination. So Paul was annoyed. After many days, he was annoyed. Turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of that, that very hour. So Paul casted out that spirit out of that girl. And the girl was delivered. Okay. But when the masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and drag them into the marketplace. <laughs> Hallelujah. When true servants of God appear in the church and they start casting out the spirits of dis divination and exposing divination, so-called pastors who are using divination start to persecute the true servants of God. Are you understanding? <laughs> Hallelujah. As soon as you see, she was preaching, Paul was preaching, Paul got annoyed and one very day as the Holy Spirit gave, told him, he told, get out of her spirit of divination. So that people came to knew, oh my, this girl was possessed with a demon, but still she was preaching the gospel. And Paul rebuked the demon out of her. And as soon as the demon went out, the masters could not make any more money. And the masters started to seize Paul and Silas. That is what happens in the church. <laughs> if I am going to, if I am supposed to go in a false church and cast out the devil and expose divination, they will report my case to the police, the pastors themselves, not unbelievers. Why? Because uh, through the true gospel, the way of these sorcerers are being abolished. People are no longer giving money to them because the true servant of God appeared in that place. <laughs> that is what happened in Ephesus. From so many years, divination was being used as a source of power and people were making money. But when Paul came with the true message of the gospel, casted out that spirit, people who used divination to make money, money started stopped coming in their accounts. Hallelujah. I am telling you, when the true gospel is preached in many churches, Sorcery will be exposed. And those who are making money out of ministry, sorcerers who are making money out of ministry, using the spirit of divination, they, it will be seized. And these are the ones, not even unbelievers. These sorcerers, so-called acting servants of God, would seize Paul, 
kind of hallelujah are you understanding let's come back to numbers chapter let's come back to numbers chapter 23 now okay have we understood what belam is doing there okay let's go to back to numbers chapter 22 before going to 23 oh hallelujah numbers 22 and we will go to verse okay so now do you understand what belam is doing verse 19 now therefore please you also stay here tonight that i may know what more the lord will say to me so first of all he says i will not go beyond the word of the lord and not take money from you he is acting up there he is doing a acting to show he is a servant of god no but in verse 19 in the next words in the next at the next second itself he is uh, breaking the word of the lord and uh, saying stay here and let me see what more i can hear from the lord okay verse 21 so belam rose in the morning saddled his donkey and went with the princes of moab okay now verse 21 if you read the hebrew text of verse 21 verse 21 it is i have noted down a bit of the hebrew text you would understand that what was belam doing first of all god came to belam in verse 20 and at night said to him verse 20 if the men come to call you rise and go with them but only the word which i speak to you that you shall do now since his heart was bent on gaining money and riches from belak so god knew he is going to go with them so that's why god came to him and told him okay you go with them but that is not the will of god by the way what is the will of god the first utterance of god is the will of god what did god told belam for the first time god told belam don't go with them don't do anything they are saying that is the established truth of god but now since he knew you know belam is a sorcerer i explained everything so since god knew that belam will go to them his heart is bent off on money but i want to protect my children of israel i want to protect israel so god again appeared to belam and told him okay you can go with them since you will not you cannot be stopped you can go with them but only say what i tell you you cannot speak by your own self okay then in verse 21 so belam rose in the morning saddled his donkey and went with the princes of moab when you read the hebrew text of went with the princes of moab the hebrew text is arranged in such a way that says originally it says that belam went in his own head belam went with his own head with them that means god did not permit him to go but yet he had a strong desire to go with them why because there is a lot of money that has been offered to belam if he goes with them are we understanding hallelujah that is the spirit of belam operating in many christians and servants of god they say oh we don't want this we don't want to go against the ways of god but when satan increases the offers hallelujah when money increases when wealth is offered more 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 they get corrupt and they fall into the error of belam hallelujah when i started ministry there were many people many of people who started ministry with me but through the way i have seen many people falling down why they started good they started nicely they started they were so obedient they carried powerful good gifts than me and uh, i thought they will go long but when money came when fame came belam started to enter them the doctrine of belam started to enter them that is the way of belam god told him not to go but when the offer increased he started to get corrupt corruption started to enter his heart and uh, his heart was bent on following them are we understanding guys so 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 it's not that you when you start off with god when you start off with god you have to be very careful and uh, align yourself in god and in the word of god and let your heart be pure before god and without any let your conscience be be cleared and led by the holy spirit if you are doing ministry otherwise corruption will enter you soon 
and you started to serve God but you will see soon after 4 5 years when your ministry is growing you are now serving not God but mammon you are not serving God but something else your direction is changed okay hallelujah are you understanding guys so let's go to numbers chapter 23 we will end soon it's hallelujah numbers chapter 23 now then balaam was one then balaam said to balak build seven altars for me here and prepare for me okay before this i will not go i don't have time but balaam when he was going the angel of the lord stood before him to kill him but the donkey saw the angel and the donkey would not go the donkey on which balaam was riding so three times the angel of god appeared and the donkey would not go ahead so balaam started to beat the donkey and the donkey gave the utterance of god the donkey started to speak and told balaam why you are beating me what i have done to you and then god opened balaam's eye and saw this balaam saw that the angel of god was standing to kill him why because on the way balaam's heart was changing there are so many christians who are not stable with the word of god they are not stable today they say we will serve god i will not do this tomorrow they do the same thing that is how balaam was he left his house saying god i will do what you you will say but when he was on his way his heart was changing should i obey god or should i accept the money should i obey god that money is too great oh my god i love that money but should i obey god should i take the money and god knew his heart that's why god sent the angel to kill balaam why because god would not let balaam the sorcerer who was the most powerful sorcerer of those time to let let him curse his own children who are walking in god's ways the children of israel hallelujah okay so numbers chapter 23 says balaam said to balak build seven altars for for me here and prepare for me your seven bulls and seven rams and balak just did as balaam had spoken and balak and balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar then balaam said to balak stand by your burnt offering and i will go perhaps the lord will come to meet me and whatever he shows me i will tell you now you tell me one thing the first instance god told him don't go with them now he is going with them also he is doing this rituals for god to come and this is not done once we will not go ahead but read chapter 23 once we finish the meeting when you have time and you will see that god came to balaam and instead he wanted to curse israel but god made his mouth bless israel and he could not say what he wanted to say but god took over the mouth of this sorcerer and he blessed israel then again again so 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 belak was discouraged oh why you are blessing them you are supposed to curse them then belak told him again that bring build another altar seven altars and then again let the lord come and speak to me so belam was giving space to belak again and again are you understanding belam heart was bent on receiving the money and he was finding ways to see whether god will change his mind but i told you god speaks only once and he will not change his mind if he has told belam to bless so that's why when you read chapter 23 you will see once god told again belam tells okay again make us let us make altars and again let me hear god again let me hear god how many times you will hear god when god has already spoken his will that is belam the sorcerer that is the condition of many christians today god has already spoken over your situation but yet you want to go to 10 20 prophets again and again to hear the same thing no i want to go there oh i want to go there i want to hear this i want to again i have seen christians who already know the will of god for their lives but yet they want to again and hear, again hear from the prophets belam the spirit of belam god has told you not to do that but again why do you want confirmation tell me god has spoken once and i have heard it twice that glory and power belongs to the lord so coming back to what i shared last friday god speaks only once he will not change his mind it is truth but belam wanted to again and maybe god change will change his mind 
God is not going to change his mind. And every time he tried to curse, he blessed. Every time he tried to curse, he blessed. Again, he blessed. Okay, now let's go to Numbers 24. Let me quickly wind up now. Numbers 24 verse 1. Now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as the other times to seek to use sorcery, but he set his face toward the wilderness. So who, he was using sorcery to your God, even your God. So when Balaam came to the understanding that God will not change his mind, he, he stopped using sorcery after that. And he went towards the wilderness. Hallelujah. If you are walking in God's will, child of God, if you are doing God's will, God will not change his mind about you. God will not change his word that he spoke to you. That he will make you a blessing for many nations. That he will bless you with the blessings of Abraham. His promises will not change for you. Never. His word stands true. His instructions stand true. Whatever he spoke to Abraham. I will bless you to be a father of many nations. Abraham walked with God and the prophecy was fulfilled. It stand true. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If any sorcerer or any diviner or any demonic spirit has spoken, is wants to speak over your life, today the Lord your God, if they want to curse you, the Lord your God is taking control over their voice now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as you stand in the will of the Lord God Most High, no weapon or no curse or no spell can come against you because even as, a, as now I am praying, the Lord God is taking control over the mouth of your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, every sorcerer, every diviner, Aramon Tokora Bakatarabakas Badarama, El Shalte Yarabala Haldaraman Dorabo, every soothsayer that the devil has assigned against your life. Today we bind that voice again. Today I bind that voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, burst out in tongues, people of God. Right now, I pray. If any sorcerer acting as a servant of God, having a hold over your life, today let the bondage of that sorcerer break over your life now in Jesus name. If any so called servant of God, who is not a true servant of God, but is an acting servant of God, but in reality he practices sorcery and you are in bondage with that person, I break that bondage over your life now in the mighty name of Jesus and I command that spirit, I command that Pharaoh to let God's people go so that they may worship God freely in the wilderness in the mighty name of Jesus my dear brothers and sisters raise up your voice and tonight let the Lord expose the sorcerers in God's kingdom in Jesus name there are many who are making money there are many who are using divination and sorcery to make money and they are looting the people of God they are living in rich houses but the people of God are in poverty because they are under the spell of sorcery but tonight I break that spell of sorcery upon the churches I break that spell of sorcery over the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ every demonic hold every sorcery every divination I command you get out of the churches now get out of the churches now as Apostle Paul rebuked and casted out the spirit of divination those innocent girls those innocent women who don't even know but they are having spirit of divination and prophets and men of God are using those women Lord to earn business to earn money using them sexually molesting them right now I command those spirits to leave those women now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we rebuke sexual immorality from the churches we remove we rebuke practices as eating things offered to the idols we rebuke the spirit of Jezebel in the mighty name of Jesus we cast them out now we cast them out now hallelujah listen to me it's morning in india it is night in us but it's morning in india so before i woke up today morning i saw a very weird dream very weird dream 
I saw a bunch of believers sitting in a room. And I saw those believer, believers, there were some true servants of God. And uh, one of the servant of God saw and discerned a spirit in a girl and started to cast out that spirit. But one man in the congregation came in front and he took off the pants in front of everyone, become naked in front of everyone, a Christian and started to act as if God told me to do this now. Oh my, deception will increase, I will tell you. I, I will not go into detail of what is it, what is it. And then I saw another servant of God, she was a lady, then she tried to pray. And when she tried to pray, again this man came, took off his pants, completely naked. And stood in front of the lady, stood in front of the daily lady. So the lady was praying here, and the girl was here, and the girl was on the verge of deliverance. This man came in front and took off his pants. And when he took off his pants, this lady started to say, Oh, I, I, I cannot pray now because I am getting headaches as the man came in front. We break every power of sorcery upon the church now in Jesus' name. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing to expose this. There are agents of Satan sitting in your congregation. You don't even know. Assigned. But we bind their activities now. We bind their activities now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, release your fire now upon your church. Release your fire now upon your congregation. And let your fire consume and burn whatever is not from you. Let it be eradicated now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire be released. We are interceding people of God. We are called to be intercessors. Oh man, God is looking for a man, a woman who can stand in the gap and plead and intercede in the spirit and pray in the spirit. But God is not able to, God does not want wants you to prophesy and take the pulpit and preach. God wants you to intercede. And tonight we are interceding for the churches of God. Father have mercy. Oh, Father have mercy on us. Father, we are the part of this body of this bo global body of Christ. We are all the part of the body. But the devil who is coming inside the body and manipulating the body of Christ, every sorcery and the doctrine of Balaam, we break it now in Jesus' name. The ways of Balaam, the greed of Balaam, the error of Balaam, we cast it out now. Let every Balaam be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every Jezebel be exposed. One, one night, one meeting, I will take the topic of Jezebel as God permits me. That is very important for us to know because Jezebel is a very big and huge stronghold holding the people of God. We break those holds tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are come, those who have come in the same field where we are planting the seeds of the kingdom, these enemies, these sorcerers who have also come to plant tares in the midst of the seeds. In Jesus mighty name, let every let their plantation be stopped. In Jesus name, we throw them out of the vineyard in the name of Jesus. We restrict entry to such peoples. We en restrict entry to every sons of wickedness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, This spirit in this meeting, this spirit of sorcery, the doctrine of Balaam has uh, released depression in some people. You are being set free from those bondages now. Depression is leaving you now even as I pray. Sadness, the spirit of heaviness is leaving you now. And God is clothing you with the garment of praise now. Every heaviness is leaving you in Jesus mighty name. There is someone in this meeting who has been who has been, you know, persecuted or being in bondage were not able to come out. Those bondages are breaking now. That depression is going out now in Jesus' name. So much so that you started to doubt God. You started to doubt the word of God. The manipulation and deception became so strong. But it is breaking now. God is setting you free now in Jesus' name. And the spirit of heaviness, leave now. Let the garment of praise take over your people now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, hallelujah. I can see arrows going from our midst right now. In the, from the realm of the... Arrows are going against your enemy. 
and God even if Balaam wants to curse you he will not be able to curse you because God will make him to bless you in Jesus mighty name hallelujah rekal chakaraba god is turning the table around for you brother sister hallelujah the things that the devil and your enemy intended to do you harm god is turning it for your good in jesus mighty name hallelujah they were supposed to curse you but they are not able to instead they will bless you they were supposed to destroy your finances but instead they are forced to bless you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah re mama the lord has fooled your enemy to work for your good in jesus mighty name hallelujah the lord is the devil has been made a fool before our god right now in the name of jesus you want to believe it or not but i am proclaiming what the lord is telling me in the name of jesus christ the devil is exposed every handwriting written contrary against your life has been nailed to the cross and jesus this work on the cross has he has exposed and stripped apart, apart the devil and made him a public spectacle in the name of jesus christ devil you are exposed tonight in the name of jesus take all your weapons take all your powers and leave the lives of god's people in jesus name i release mighty deliverance in your life in jesus mighty name father we want to thank you for this time hallelujah i pray let your word that has been spoken bear fruits in the lives of people let it take deep roots in their lives let us not be like belaam who waver in our heart but let us let us stick to your word in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the further time i give into your hands i cover everyone with the blood of jesus those who are not able to attend even them their families with the blood of jesus i cover let them be mighty warriors and ex and exploit and torment the enemy's kingdom make them mighty men and women of god i pray man and women of mysteries walking in your word and not compromising on worldly standards in jesus mighty name we cover everyone with the blood of jesus in jesus name we pray and every one of god's people will say amen god bless you okay and uh, sunday we are having intercession uh, sunday eastern time 8 pm 8 pm eastern time sunday evening we are going to intercede for the nations and for several points as for the needs of god's people who would come so we will see how the holy spirit leads us so if you are free if you can come please be a part we will intercede together for the nations god bless you over to sister ruth wow just uh, just want to welcome everyone tonight that came on and i guess we have some new people and if you would like to introduce yourself you can do that at this time hi my name is who you are sitting there well Mm -hmm. Okay, you could go to Jessica. My name is Jessica. I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in USA. Amen. Hallelujah. Else? Why you came on tonight? You I came on today because I need sincere um understanding of God and Jesus and the areas that he called me to uh walk in and I need to walk according to the things God want me to and um I just need to get myself together <laughs> you know God had a big calling on my life and he made that quite clear but I just can't seem to get to the worship that I'm trying to break through to walk according with him. I find myself wallowing in a lot of regret and sadness because of I failed missions that God gave me to do. So I feel guilty like my praise is hindered because of my guilt and also I want to succeed in the things that God called me to do, but I need to understand God and his will so i can give him what he want i don't want to disappoint jesus i don't want to disappoint my calling i don't want to hurt the people of god and i don't want to be destroyed so i am just frantic and a, a lot of it start getting scary i start 
going frantic before him. And I know that's probably not what he wants. I'm just trying to find clarity because it's just myself. I don't have anybody with me to guide me other than my Lord, which he's been amazing to me. Mm. And I'm just really need to understand and to um, focus and to do the will of God that he called me to do it properly. Amen. Amen. Oh. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming on. There's another brother that wanted to speak. Walden. Walden. Hello. Hello. I'm from Kenya. Oh. I was enjoying the program and uh, there, was, there were some things that I had uh, prayed during the day and God had answered me through this program. So oh. I think God wanted me to join this program. Thank you, everyone, and God bless you. Amen. Where did you, where did you say you were from? Kenya. Kenya. Okay. Welcome. I'm from Africa. Uh, Africa. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Uh, Sister K, you have something to say? Well, I can just say thank God because people are just coming on here and, you know, from what um, Apostle Raul is sharing tonight, you know, it, it's, it's just like opening up our mind. It's so much revelation knowledge. So yes, I can understand the man from Kenya. You know, you got so much from it because it is so great for what he's sharing and I thank God for it. And even if you come in here feeling like oppressed, depressed, uh, you know, you do a whole bunch of things happen with your life. When you get the truth, the Bible said the truth will set you free. And that is what's happening here tonight. And I thank God for that. And I thank God that he will attract more and more people because people are hungry for his word. And they will get fed. Thank you very much, Apostle. Thank you. Is there anyone needs to pray for healing tonight? If you, if you need prayer for healing, you could take off your mute and just say you need prayer. I need prayer. Okay. Is there anyone else? Amen. I definitely need prayer. Okay. At this time, we'll ask Brother Ajay to pray for you. He could take off his mute and pray for these people as they need prayer tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you have made this all possible, oh God. This evening, oh God, I pray for these two. Oh God, first time visitors on Zoom, oh God. I pray, Lord God, as they put their trust into you, I pray that before the morning comes, oh God, that you will touch each of them from the crown of their head to their very soul of their feet, O oh God. I pray wherever, O oh God, they might be aching, wherever, O oh God, might not be feeling well, whether it be, 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 the, be the mind or the soul or the body, O oh God, I pray for a divine healing right now. I pray, O oh God, that your hands touch their afflictions, O oh God. I pray that, God, they will learn that without you, nothing is possible. But, O oh God, with you, all things are possible if they can only believe at this moment, Lord. I know, O oh God, that you have them in the palms of your hands. You have their situations and their circumstances, O oh God. I pray that, Father, you will deliver them right now from the bondages of sin, O oh God, and they'll be able to testify when they came up when, when they come on back here on Sunday oh God of what you have done and what you will continue to do into their lives bless them in a very special way right now Lord let the yeah. peace of your son Jesus reign upon their lives and let the mm. divine favor, oh God be seen upon them right now in yeah. Jesus name I pray and all of God's yeah. children says Amen Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.
At this time, we have Brother Lindsay blow the chauffeur. Hey, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want this uh, chauffeur blast to go out to Jessica and to, I think her name is, is it Walden? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I want this uh, shofar blast to go out to Jessica and to Walden. Um, just listen for the sound and come in agreement with the sound that God is going to break the yoke of the bondage off of you that you've been going through. And you're going to feel the heavens opened up over you and the angels are going to be released in your direction. And that you will get guidance and you will have nothing but shalom, peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing left undone in your life, in your ministry. And God is going to accelerate you where you need to be. And that Satan, that there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Satan may try, but he will not prosper. The weapon can form, but it will not prosper. God will break it. He will break it because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So, <clears throat> so as the shofar is sounded, just raise your hands up to the ceiling or if you're outside, just raise it up to the sky and just remember that this is the sound of victory. This is the sound of restoration, restitution, recompense. It's the sound of the resurrection because the Lord said the battle belongs to him, but he has given each and every one of us the victory in Christ Jesus. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Malak Ha'alam, Asher Kiddushanu, Bimitzvitov Vetivanu, Lesh Moako Shofar. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Master of the universe, who sanctifies us with your commandments and commands us to hear the sound of the Shofar. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I just heard a rooster, and that rooster means resurrection power. So wow. just wait for the resurrection. Wait for the resurrection because it's coming to each and every one of us, each and every one who's on this line. The battle belongs to the Lord, but He's given you the resurrection power tonight. It's going to change. God has turned it around for your favor and in your direction. But what the devil was meant for evil, he has turned it around for your good, for Jessica and for Walden and for everyone else 
who is on this line because God is all about relationship, fellowship, and partnership. And he is about his results for the kingdom, Amen. for his perfect will in Yeshua Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, Sister Kay, you're going to tell you about your service tomorrow? You're going to have a oh, service yes. tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we will have our service tomorrow. Come on, prayer warriors. And, uh, you know, those that are standing in the gap for your families, for the nation. You know, come on and we will pray together. I will send send out the information tomorrow. Thank you. God bless Amen. you. Our brother from uh, Kenya who has joined, Brother Wandery, um, uh, you share your number with Sister Ruth or uh, Sister Ruth will share you, her number. So if you want messages, uh, we have don't have messages in the written format. But we have a YouTube channel on which we post the messages, messages and the sermons. So you can find out the sermons on YouTube. So Sister Ruth can share it with you if you have WhatsApp or through an, any other means. So that you can get access to the teachings that we do here. Okay. So Sister Ruth can take... Ah, you are, no. you are on mute. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I never met him before. How did you hear about us? Just through the net. Through who? God led me. So you you take you you can message the number, brother, on this uh, Zoom line. Message your number. Sister Ruth okay, will get back to you. Yeah. So Thank because you. we after you leave the meeting, we don't have any contact with you. We don't know. So, okay. so we will have a record so that we can contact you. Or if you need anything, you can message message Sister Ruth on WhatsApp okay. if you have WhatsApp. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, he texted my telephone number. Yeah. Where did he say he heard, he heard about this? Zoom? I think internet. He came through the internet. Oh. <clears throat> Because I met Jessica today. Yes. Yeah. So, um, thank God for Jessica. Thank you for coming on. And we'll be praying for you and with you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Dea, are you having a service too? Me? Tomorrow at seven. Tomorrow? On Saturday, yes. Is Sister Jaya having one too? Oh. Yes. Uh, Monday night. Uh, and for India, it will be Tuesday morning. Ten <laughs> thirty, <laughs> right? Ten thirty, yes. Exactly, ten thirty. Uh, okay. So, what time is it in Kenya? What it's very it early. In it's very early, I think. No, in Kenya? In Kenya. We have uh, people from Kenya in our that meeting. Uh, they, it, I think it's uh, two and a half hours uh, behind. Oh. So I was really surprised that to see that perfect. brother from Kenya because it's very early in the morning. It's 3 a.m. in Kenya. Oh. Oh, 3 a.m. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lift you up right now. We thank you for this service. Father, I thank you for your word, which you poured out so beautifully through Apostle Raul. Thank you for just leading us and teaching us and touch our hearts. I pray that every heart is open to receive the words that you speak, Father God. And Lord, let us not just hear it one time and walk away. Let us chew on it, meditate yes. on it, and remember this. Even those who've taken notes, which I suggest that we all do, take notes yes. and read them during the week. Father, I pray that your hand be yes. upon each and every person here. God, that you bring healing, deliverance, 
Lord, that you touch, let your power flip on us right now, oh Lord. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, watch over us through the night, Lord, and keep us. You promised a sweet sleep. I pray for sweet sleep. I pray for the peace of God to flow through each and every one of us, Lord. And we bless and praise you. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for your man of God. Thank you for each and every soul represented here, Father, and those that are on their way to come for the next service. Father, we bless you right now and thank you. We give you all the glory and honor and in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. All thanksgiving. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you all. Take care. Amen. amen. Good night, everyone. Good night. God bless you. Good night. Good night.